Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wohler for the Advanced Organic Acids Test Mastery course. This is a advanced organic acid test topic called methylation and biopterin metabolism. <clears throat> so the organic acids test from Great Plains Laboratory is a very comprehensive lab profile that looks at a number of metabolic markers indicating underlying metabolic disorders and dysfunction, as well as the presence of specific toxins, bacterial tox toxins, fungal toxins. So the organic, advanced organic acids test mastery course is going through each marker on the O test from Great Plains. We'll also be discussing other markers from other companies' organic acids tests as well. So when you take this course, you'll come away very confident in interpreting other organic acids tests. So methylation and biopterin metabolism. The methylation system is very complex, but it's not just methylation. It's also linked to the folate cycle and also something called the biopterin cycle, this chemical here called BH4. And this has a tremendous influence on neurotransmitters in the brain and the nervous system. We know that methylation has an important relationship as well to immune function, nervous system function, and detoxification with regards to glutathione support. So there's a lot of attention placed on the MTHFR gene a lot of attention is focused on the C677T variety, and sometimes the A1298C tends to get lost in the shuffle. But this is an important enzyme because it has a relationship to BH4 uh, metabolism, and BH4 plays a big role in a greater influence in how these interactive cycles work. So you can do a genetic profile, whether it's from Great Plains, doctors, data, or other companies, and evaluate for your MTHFR. You'll get the C677T as well as the A1298C. So any type of polymorphism in that enzyme is obviously going to affect the function of those enzymes. So here is our metabolic pathway linking tyrosine, phenylalanine to dopamine. Now, dopamine is converted to norepinephrine through the actions of dopamine beta hydroxylase. And there are many things that can inhibit the activity of dopamine beta hydroxylase, including the presence of bacterial toxins from Clostridia bacteria. One is called 4-creosol, another is called HPHPA, and these are all identifiable off the organic acids test. Tyrosine is also part of this equation. Now, tyrosine gets converted normally to DOPA and the DOPA to dopamine. In the presence of Clostridia difficile, the tyrosine is used to make more for creosol. Now, another influence on this system is BH4, tetrahydrobiopterin, because it is a cofactor in the conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine as well as tyrosine to DOPA. Now, the chemistry begins with a chemical called terin. And these are heterocyclic compounds with different ring structures. Folate is a derivative of a terin. And terins are complexed biochemically to become what are called biopterins. Biopterins act as cofactors for what are called amino hydroxylases. They help produce dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, as well as nitric oxide. And BH4 tetrahydrobiopterin and BH2 dihydrobiopterin are the two principal biopterins found in the body. Tetrahydrobiopterin in the phenylalanine to tyrosine sequence is the cofactor for an enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase. BH4 is the cofactor for the conversion of tryptophan 
to 5-HTP through the actions of a tryptophan hydroxylase. And then we have a tyrosine hydroxylase, which converts tyrosine to dopa. So BH4 plays a role in all of that. A BH4 deficiency could lead to a deficiency of tyrosine to serotonin, <clears throat> as well as dopamine. The important thing to, to recognize about chemicals like tetrahydrobiopterin is they have to be recycled. They get recycled from an inactive to an active state. These recycling enzymes are very vulnerable to oxidative stress. So endogenously produced toxins within the body as well as things that are acquired outside, chemicals for example, things that trigger inflammation like chronic infections could alter the levels and the effect of something like BH4. Here's just another image here of tyrosine being converted to different catecholamines through the actions of BH4. Here's our link with serotonin, tyrosine, and then nitric oxide. Tyrosine, we know, is important for the production of DOPA. Tyrosine also has an influence on thyroid function. DOPA becomes dopamine. Tryptophan to 5-HTP becomes serotonin. And there's a greater role here, as I mentioned, on nitric oxide, as well as functions of, of cell membrane activity in the brain and nervous system. Now, a condition called phenylketonuria is where we have a blockage in our phenylalanine hydroxylase. So here's an interesting, if we just focus right here, here's our BH4. It gets converted to BH2, okay, as it acts as a cofactor for the conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine. So a precursor to L-dopa, to dopamine, a precursor to melanin, so pigment in the skin, a precursor to CoQ10, that influences mitochondrial activity, a precursor to T3, T4, so that influences thyroid activity. On the organic acids test, there's two markers, phenylactic acid and phenylpyruvic acid, which can indicate some type of blockage in our phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme. So there is clinical suspicion for poor BH4 activity if we're seeing things like high dopamine, excuse me, high ammonia, low thyroid function, low energy focus problems, pale skin, okay, somebody doesn't have enough pigment, low dopamine, low norepinephrine, low serotonin. These can all be measured off the organic acid test in the neurotransmitter section. So if we see the metabolite of serotonin low, that could be because of a BH4 deficiency. If we see low levels of homovanillic or vanillomandylic acid, which are the metabolites of dopamine and norepinephrine respectively, that too could indicate poor BH4 activity. And BH4 is something that you can either get as a medication or a supplement. So abnormal metabolism of phenylalanine occurs when phenylalanine hydroxylase becomes inhibited or blocked, could be genetic, and BH4 acts as a cofactor. And we can, on the organic acids test from Great Plains, see an increase in phenylactic acid or phenylacetic acid. It's typically found in the neuro, excuse me, the amino acid metabolite section on the last page of the oat. So the last page of the organic acid test are these amino acid metabolites. And so if you see increased phenylactic and pyruvic, that is a suspicion here that there is a BH4 deficiency or something blocking that phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme. And elevated levels of phenylalanine in a condition called phenylketonuria can be serious. In fact, it can lead in really, really high levels to mental retardation, seizures, uh, tremors, microcephaly, for example. We also can get pigmentation problems. We know that we can get uh, poor pigmentation, very pale skin. 
there's a musty odor to urine. So if we block the enzyme, we don't get reactivity of supporting melanin, supporting catecholamines, even supporting mitochondrial activity. In fact, one of the things that happens with the phenylalanine metabolism is a byproduct chemically that supports the mitochondria. So we can support acetyl coenzyme A as an entry point into the Krebs cycle, as well as fumarate, which is part of the Krebs cycle. So a phenylalanine hydroxylase deficiency or a deficiency of BH4 could affect and lead to Krebs cycle defects leading to mitochondrial dysfunction. So the organic acid test, again, has markers that help to indicate potential problems in this biochemical system. Another interesting chemical found on the, the amino acid metabolite section on the last page of the oat is mandylic acid. Mandylic can actually be high for the same reasons that phenylactic and phenylpyruvic can be high. However, if you expand your horizons, one of the things that can also lead to increases of mandylic is styrene exposure. And styrene is found in plastic manufacturing. It's found in car exhaust fumes. We can also see styrofoam exposure can lead to a styrene elevation on a Great Plains test called the GPL tox profile, which is looking at environmental chemicals. So the organic acid test then allows us to expand our horizons and see uh, how it can link up to other types of testing. 4-hydroxyphenylactic is another chemical sometimes seen on the organic acid test on the amino acid metabolite that has a link to tyrosine metabolism. It's called tyrosinemia. Now, there are genetic reasons for tyrosinemias, and there's different types. There's type 1, 2, and 3. Type 1, for example, is the most severe. It can lead to mental uh, developmental problems, neurological issues, seizures, intellectual disabilities. Again, these are probably more linked to inborn errors of metabolism in children. But there can be subtle defects that occur in adults as well. And we already know about some of the problems in not converting enough to tyrosine, but too much tyrosine can have its own issues as well because you know too much tyrosine then leads into potentially too much dopamine. So as you increase dopamine, you can increase dopa, which increases dopamine, which will increase the homovanillic acid marker on the organic acid test. That same thing can happen is if you block the dopamine beta hydroxylase through the actions of inhibiting chemicals produced by Clostridia bacteria. Now, too much dopamine, as, as has mentioned previously, um, is neurotoxic at high levels because dopamine breaks down into a chemical called dopamine oquinone. And dopamine oquinone will damage nerve cells in the brain or nervous system. So there can be many reasons for increased dopamine now. So we can have increased tyrosine metabolism. Again, problems that affect the dopamine beta hydroxylase, copper deficiency can lead to that, vitamin C. So one of the things to ask is when you see an organic acid test, when the homovanillic acid marker is elevated by itself in the presence of normal clostridia, is what else could be causing that to be high? And there are many things. Mutations in the enzyme, deficiencies of certain nutrients, etc. So all of this and much more is discussed in depth in the Advanced Oat Mastery course. Now, I'm Dr. Kurt Waller. I've been an integrative and functional medicine physician for over two decades. I've been doing clinical education for Great Plains Laboratory for many years, as well as my own Integrative Medicine Academy, which is an online training academy with mastery courses in 
various topics related to integrative and functional medicine. I've been working with patients in the autism community now for over two decades. I work with patients with autoimmune disease, gastrointestinal, and other neurological disorders. One of the running themes of all of our mastery courses, including this advanced OAT mastery course, is think critically, think clinically. And that's how to apply the information that the test is providing to the clinical presentation of your patient. It's not just about supplementing for every single marker that's elevated or low, but how to appropriately use the test information for the greatest gain of your patient. And in this particular course, we're going through each marker on the organic acid test in depth. Because the organic acid test can be viewed as a hub of the wheel, if you will. It's a focal point, it's a foundational test. And it allows us, in many cases, to expand our horizons into other types of testing, whether that's chemical testing, mycotoxin testing, etc. For more information about the Advanced Oat Mastery course, you can go to advancedoatmasterycourse.com. You can also email us at advancedoatmasterycourse at gmail.com. You also have access to this complimentary book on advanced organic acid test um, testing called Understanding the Power of the Organic Acids Test Marker by Marker by texting on your phone, cell phone to OAT, you can text the word OAT, O-A-T, to 66866. You'll get a link to download this book. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for the Advanced OAT Mastery Course. Thank you.